I hope everybody's doing well this morning. Hope yeah. you guys are well. Nothing but good news. I was just prepping or just uh, throwing out a question that we talked about yesterday, George, of adding yeah. your own EOS um, business operating system listed under 90 as a platform and yeah, try to gauge the, gauge the interest in that point. Yeah, Joe, thank you. And and Joe and I had a great conversation yesterday. 90.io is a great, um, let's just take it, uh, a project management with accountability, if I could just summarize. But when you go in there, you know, their history is as an EOS software, closely aligned with that organization. And a little history, that organization told them when they were purchased by Firefly out of New York, private equity, um, they told 90 to pound sand. And interestingly, that was at exactly the same time as I had to shut down core value. So I had written to Mark and said, hey, man, you are now a technology without a methodology, and we are a methodology without a technology. And that was my note. We should talk. I ended up talking to three of their top guys. And those conversations are kind of bubbling along at a high level. I haven't pushed too hard, but I let them know what we want. And I'm not going to share this here because we're going to publish this publicly. Um, but they're they're receptive to our message, or at least they're listening. And when you go into 90, you know, if you click on business operating system, you have two choices, 90.io and EOS. And to Joe's point, what if there was a third? We have a third, right? We have our own operating system, chapter 10 in my book. What if that was other alternative? There's actually five, George. Okay. Yeah, I just happened to... Uh, want to be populated with those two, but there's five other one Pinnacle on there. They got they got a bunch of them. So they have Pinnacle guides, EOS ninety. Do they have Metronomics by any chance? Doesn't matter. Uh, we would like to have our brand, our way of doing things, and then of course long term. So that would bring the twenty four growth driving objectives, the supporting key results, our rhythm of meetings, our take on the agenda, importantly, business flow that is tied into our 24. I mean, we have a very carefully designed system. Anyway, so there, there's a little background. And this is me without coffee, guys. I apologize. But I'll add something to the tank. <laughs> yeah. The thought is that we kind of come up with the the plan and, and I they have they have very specialized teams now that work with the different operating systems. I think they have uh, a team of 12 or 13 people that just simply take an operating system and, and, and um, integrate it into their system. So it's uh, highly, highly uh, possible. And they move along with the, based on my experience and very, because they're also doing coaches coach, for instance. Okay, great. And so they're, they've been able to uh, tailor that. So I, um, I just, as I, as I go forward with Ed and, and we have a couple we get approaching a hundred million dollar, um, contractor and that growth drive stuff is much more appropriate for that. It's just now, um, I got to make it work with, with what I'm, what I'm used to. And I, and I believe it, it drives a lot of efficiency in the relationship as far as, you know, letting them populate all the numbers and we're not interrupting them to get a spreadsheet that the, all the data is already put up by them. And then all we're doing is reviewing at a high level, asking some pertinent questions. And behind the scenes, guys, our, there's a, I, I've said it publicly, we, you know, we, we have an API and that API will, when we publish it, will connect to a CRM, including, but not, but, you know, but it, HubSpot, it'll connect to, um, let's go high level, which is terrific and is setting the world on fire right now. They're taking the fight to HubSpot. So those types of CRM, Zoho, et cetera, and an API to QuickBooks. And the power of the API to QuickBooks is keeping you, you, not the client, you have the refresh button, but we can, we can pull financial data out of QuickBooks so we can start imagine having real-time updates to gross revenues, net income. And, you know, we do not want to be a CFO tool, but cash is so important that some consideration for cash, you know, for, for cash flow. And I have some ideas, but I don't want to 
Um, so if that that all makes sense, so suddenly we would have you would I mean, imagine imagine the conversations you can have, and imagine the data that you are tracking. Uh, so I think it's a great idea, Joe. I say go. You know, okay. go talk to their team. If you need anything you need from me or from the community, let us know. Yeah, I think what we'd do is if we could we could even do a bump out hour on the side thing down in the at the conference when everybody's together, we can kind of do a high level briefing of saying, here's the skeleton of what we got and we're you know, let the community kind of, you know, give it give some feedback and then go to because it's uh it's 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 a rapid fire decision and and it, so I'm kind of building it out for three of my clients, Ed and I are approaching and I need it anyway. So, um, well, and talk to Vince, Vince Master Vito, whose podcast, by the way, guys, my podcast interview with Vince about his T3 think tanks is publishing today. Really fun conversation. Uh, that's right. So talk to Vince and speaking of the conference. So Brad, I know you can't come, but for the best reason, client engagement is that's what it's all about. But the but the rest of us will be there, and the something that we're not something. I was hoping to have uh, Larry. Larry was trying to make it, but he's obviously not here. On Monday morning, we have the bonus session, and the bonus session is a deep dive into clarity, specifically how do we apply clarity in a client case. And what I'm hoping, I'd love some ideas from you guys about three of the modules or topics, right? Why that you think you'd like to see workshopped uh, during those, we have three hours together. So we can do some, I'm thinking of a blend of pre's, a little chalk and talk, but then, then a group discussion. You know, we, it looks like we're gonna have over 30 people just in that bonus session. So I don't, it, we can't do a, our traditional workshop, because we, but we can do a concentrated uh, version. Does that make sense? Cool. Any ideas? You y'all are working with clients. Um, you're deep in the weeds. Well, my first thought, George, would be uh, the HR. Okay. Wait, I get a transcript to this. Okay, great. HR technology. I'm getting used to the fact that it does a lot of this work for me now. Okay. So, thirdly, technology. Can you amplify on HR, Chad, please? The importance of roles, responsibilities, job descriptions, specific tasks, per role, CEO, CFO, CRO. Interesting. Yep. Does that make sense? It does. So I just want to make sure I capture this accurately. So we have the leadership module that takes the 24 growth driving objectives and assigns accountability, primary accountability across four functional areas. Now those functional areas often have a C leader uh, in, in, accountable for the totality. And those are executive, finance, operations, and revenue. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So I'm looking at the executive here, the financial and the operations. Okay. Very cool. And if we unpack people productive and loyal, we would be looking at concepts that we've seen play out really well. For example, having one number that defines success, making sure that people are being paid at market and not simply what the business can afford. The concept of dignity um, in a job, right? Uh, we could we could play with culture, not play with, but we could, you know, okay. So executive roles would it also make sense? I'm thinking out loud to do to spend an hour discussing how. Uh, and by the way, guys, I am 85% sure we're going to record this. I'm not sure how the audio quality will be, but I'm 85% sure we will record the uh, the event um and another one george perhaps um recruiting recruiting process quality of recruiting how do you budget for recruiting yes and and the and and the implied cost of turnover right 
Yep. Acquisition and loss are very expensive, which goes to people productive and loyal. That's right. Yeah. Higher, right? So, okay. So you, you, we have four topics there. Executives, people productive and loyal. Yep. You also have people hiring and training. And then I threw culture in the mix. And, and I mentioned culture because- Well, that's, culture, the, that's the biggest piece of it. Well, that's the, that's the dark matter, right? That's the can do, will do. And frankly, when I think about having a second live event during the year, I believe the first one we will host is going to be a workshop on the relationship between the 24 growth driving objectives and a killer culture. And wouldn't that be fun, right? Imagine doing a day and a half or two days on that. Okay, cool. So the, um, I was remember, reminded the other day at a um, session, facilitator was talking about uh, a brainstorming exercise that the leadership team did. And they had four or five big flip charts full of different things that were going on issues that are in the business, right? So facilitating to get consensus around the biggest things, right? And and so as a practical matter, do we have do we have the skill set already? Is that something that's that that's in you know innately to us that's just what we do? Or is there a, a skill a refresher course on just facilitating a brainstorming session that would lead to that um, the senior before or after the senior leadership assessment tool. So like, okay, the so what of senior leadership assessment tool, maybe a tactical refresher on that be that long. It could be a half an hour, it could be an hour, but uh, just a reminder of how to run a good facilitated brainstorming session. And then the so what, in this particular case, they had looked up and there was like a host of 95 issues and about 80% were people, right? And so it's like that facilitated conversation is really a great illumination for the whole entire team and say, everybody's fighting people problems. And so we got to get the people right so that the walk away from that facilitated meeting with the leadership senior leadership team alignment report is that it's it's going back to the culture going back to the people you got to get the people right so that's all the numbers that we do ahead of that all the all the gap finding and all that stuff is all out the window if we don't get the people right so that that kind of leads to that leadership team segment but um how do you eliminate that effectively through the process to remind people, find the leadership team that it's it is about the people and the culture yeah. and less about the numbers. I mean that numbers are okay, but you know, we could we could throw the dart and whatever, but we don't have the right people. So I don't know. I'm just thinking Joe, about I know Joe, you're 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 hitting on something really good. Hey Brad, you're you're uh relatively new to the community. Welcome by the way, your first coffee clutch. It's great to have you, man. Uh, Man, by the way, just say you're maybe you've watched some of these. These can range from two of us to I think our most was 14 um, once. You know, typically six, eight people get together. So, Joe, what you just hit on, I mean, we're going to bring it back out of I've put it back. I put it in the garage, if you will. It's at the back of the garage with a with a cover on it. But it's it's back there. We have our facilitation course, right, which we ran We've run once and it went very well, got high marks. We ran it down in Fort Lauderdale, right? Down in Fort Lauderdale. So this is going to come back out in 25, all right? We're going to bring it back out of the barn. And um, and I am an unregistered independent in New Hampshire and South Carolina. And I'm sorry that I keep twitching and looking at my, my phone is ringing no matter how often I say, please go away, spam, it doesn't go away. So we're going to bring this back out of the barn. How do we facilitate? How do we hone your facilitation skills and create the confidence, which we have successfully done? My poster child is Mike Desiato, right? He is facilitating events. He has gone from being a 40-year tax pro 
to facilitating senior leadership workshops and facilitating senior leadership um, deep analysis. That is, that is, that's, I'm really proud of the fact that we have helped a very smart, intelligent, hardworking, dedicated guy go from, I have no clue how to do this and very candid, right? Vulnerable to, man, I, I, we're doing it and we're getting it. We are nailing it. So we'll bring this back out, Joe. So we might do, you know, I'm just spitballing, but maybe we do a workshop that is, you know, day one is facilitation skills. And on day two, you know, some, some, some blend of facilitation, we might facilitate a culture workshop. Okay. Great idea. Now I want to bring us back on topic. So Brad, you're new to the community. I'd love to hear from you with knowing what you know now, what Topics might interest you. I know you're not going to be able to be here next time, man. Right, right, right. So I'm just kind of diving in the deep end. Um, you know, I've listened to um, your podcasts, some of them twice, just trying to get the terminology and how people are using the tool and um, very excited. It fits in extremely well with, with what we do. So my whole emphasis right now is kind of um, how do I get connected with COIs, create the COI groups using clarity as, you know, the, I don't want to say bait, but, you know. Yeah. At the attraction. Yeah. Right. This is why I'm different. This is what I do. I love right. that. And, and Brad, to pick on that topic, you're going to hear a lot just back from the DEI conference, very high level, high net worth wealth advisors with correlating deep Rolodexes of, of, of business owning clients. So we're going to talk about that. So sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. What topics, if you were going to, if I parachuted you in on Monday morning, I said, hey, man, we're going to talk about the methodology, the process and the software. What, what topics would just, would you say, hey, man, I want to talk, I want to learn about one, two, three of these. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah. So it is improving my skills of uh, understanding of the tools, particularly clarity, and how to engage COIs and business owners. Okay. That's number one. That's a fabulous topic, especially given that we're going to have a bunch of exit planning wealth advisors in the room. I love that, Brad. Thank you. Good. Direct. In fact, I'll commit to that being one of the topics um, for sure. It did work. Yeah. Sure. It Probably with the, my, I've had the longest relationship. Steve, good morning. Good morning. Just an editorial comment. That subject of facilitation, I'm speaking from your perspective or putting putting words in your mouth or whatever, but I think that's one of those foundational things. If we can't do that, we're less than valuable. So, and if, if you're successful, your community will grow and there'll be new people coming in. So, so from my perspective, I think the facilitation thing is something that shouldn't go away. It should roll out periodically to refresh existing members and then introduce it to new members. Yeah. The so. chapter of facilitation as well is that it, it really has to be done. We can do the, you know, as we did last time, Steve, thank you. Uh, because as we did last time, we taught um, several chapters of this. This is our textbook, if you will, for the facilitation course. Um, by the way, if you don't have a copy, it's $52 on Amazon. It's uh, $52 very well spent. And this guy, Michael Wilkinson, is a, he's very good at presenting concepts and we use them. It's the reason the workshop last Monday was such a home run. People were, it was fun. It was, it was successful, but we need to get together live. Uh, that would be part of a live gathering because you can't really teach facilitation through an LMS. We can teach the concepts, but we need to get together and practice them. So Steve, like I said, that is going to come back at least once a year. Life. Okay. Anyway, I think that's a good idea. I, as I, yeah, well, you know, like I said, just back from the oncologist, that's my, everything is everything. Well, things are great. Sid, Sid is healthy, strong. She's 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 doing great. She's such a stud. I'm really. It's a she's blessed. So, okay. Yeah. The, the just to cap that off, George is really the most important thing that we can be providing is some 
disparaging, uh, dis- uh, disparate, uh, different. Yeah, well, just what, what we bring to the table. We're able to deal with the uncomfortable and get uncomfortable with the uncomfortable. And if we're not able to facilitate that properly, then then that that's just all unravels from there. Because, you know, we're at that point of saying, hey, you got to be firing that brother, a CFO, whatever. And no one in the room is willing to tell the guy he doesn't have any clothes on, right? So we have to provide that uh, level of, of intensity. And if we're not comfortable with it, uh, there you yeah. go. And Joe, if you didn't have any clothes on, I promise you, I would tell you. You guys are collaborating on a case, right? Not yet. Working Not on yet. it. Not yet. I ain't working on it. I love it. So facilitation, there's a there's a bit of a, a misunderstanding also out there. Good facilitation skills are absolutely applicable, useful, and transformational in the growth conversation. When we're sitting one-on-one with our potential client or client and trying to want to get to their deep why. But if you think about the strategic planning analysis, right? Strategic intent analysis that's in the community. It's a simple one page questionnaire and it really guides the conversation, personal, professional, business, and boils it down to quarterly. And um and that that is you have any do you have any videos on YouTube around the strategic leadership or I'm sorry, uh facilitation? Not yet. Well I mean we have them in the LMS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I don't have, we did not record the session in Florida. Joe was there. Were you there? You were there, Chad, right? No, you were. Yes, I yes, 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 we were. I was there. Well, Chad, man, you were my poster. I was telling the story and I used your name. So I felt like I knew you, like we had met. And Chad and I met for the first time in Florida. And I thought that we had met several times prior, but we talked so often over video that, you know, I feel like I know you, man. And, and, so I couldn't remember if that was the event where we met. They are all starting to run together in my head. Sleep deprivation, whatever excuse, age. Um, so anyway. Okay, cool. So we have Brad on collaborating with COIs and Mike Garrison, author of Can I Drive and Borrow Your Car? Um, is going to be there. He's become, a, yes. So he's going to teach a one-hour workshop and he's, his voice will be in the room. He will be there on Monday morning so we can tap on Mike for Brad to hit uh, your topic, executive leadership. Well, thank you, Zoom. That's, I don't, I want to, like, don't be Italian on this. I, I'm a very animated speaker. The other day it made fireworks go off. I went like this. Let's see. Now, yeah, okay. Well, I got the balloons. So, so, okay, so we have, seriously, we have COIs could be the first one. The second could be executive leadership, right? Because those are related. Now we've met the client and let's, you know, what does that look like and how do we dig in with the tool, differentiate ourselves? And then the third, the third could be people, right? And it's transitioning into senior leadership alignment and people productive and loyal. Okay, I'll kick those ideas around. Thanks so again. It's to follow up on Joe's comment about people. Um, my first impression going through clarity is that it's almost assumed that the senior leadership team can be assigned these duties. Like, okay, Mr. Chief Revenue Officer, you've got to find a repeatable sales process for us. Go get it. You got 90 days. Yeah. In my experience, that. Nope, it's not. I agree. I totally agree, Brad. And that becomes, so that's from a, if we think of, let's talk about this. That is a very good point. And it's purposeful. So if it's okay with you, I'll share my perspective. And then I'd love for you to shoot holes in it. So we have a choice when we sit with a client. The client's running their business. They're typically, they're frustrated often because they're stuck. Like, they're, why the heck can't I grow any bigger? Or why can't I make this easier to run? Those are those. That's eighty-three percent. And we sit with them, and they they perceive, right, that they have a senior leadership team, or that at least they have managers who are helping them. And we have a choice. We can either say, "Listen, I have thirty-five years of experience, and I'm highly confident that your people can't get it done for you." 
Let's think about what the client hears there. Or Rick, love to meet them. And, uh, and let's, you know, I'd love to meet them. You know, one of the things we could do is we could get their perspective on, on the strategic capacity of the business so that we're all, we're all starting in the same place. Does that make sense? And, and by doing that, what we're trying to do, what, from my perspective, this is one man's perspective, although I baked it into the methodology, but I'm trying to get the client to lift that baby up and say, you know, Brad, I, I may have an ugly baby, right? So yeah. if we come in and we say your brother-in-law is worth a is worth a damn, and he he's no CFO, he's very good at bookkeeping, but he's no CFO. There's there's a risk in that statement, right? Not that there's a, you know confrontation can be very valuable, but but is also or does the client sit back and say you know well, now that you're describing what a CFO actually does, now that you're showing me these accountabilities for the CFO, turns out my brother-in-law can't do any of that. So that's my my thinking. Did I did I explain that adequately? Sure. At least somewhat sure. clearly. Just want to make sure I wouldn't call on all the wrong people. No, you are not calling on all the wrong people. No, we see it all the time. You know the the uh, you know there's a case that's very near and dear to my heart, where um, there was a friend, employee of the company had a friend. That friend was looking for some part time work and knew something about bookkeeping. Got brought in, and you know where the story is leading, right? Got yeah. brought in to do the bookkeeping. And then got given the label controller and then got given the title of chief financial officer. But this is in a this is in a five year period where I mean she worked hard and was dedicated and wanted to do a good job and acted as the CFO and represented herself as the CFO, but knew that she actually she was she was being a good egg, right? She knew she wasn't a CFO per se. She knew she was, she's like, well, I came in to be a part-time bookkeeper and suddenly I'm, I'm working 60 hours a week and, and I need and I, and we had a fractional CFO to, to, to support her, right? Does that resonate with what you guys see out in the market? You know, Bob needs promotion. Well, he's been the controller for six years. Man, maybe we'll make him the CFO. And, but, but. But Bob is not a CFO. Yeah, man. Oh, so Brad, you're spot on. And so the assumption is is that we need to educate our client about what they have and, and significantly what they may not have. And that goes back to Joe on facilitation. You know. Yeah. Steve. Yeah, I think the um, Joe. Sorry. What I've seen is it's kind of keeping up with the the pay increases and justifying the pay increases by giving them a new title without the formalized training and with the hopes that somehow they they would absorb that you know guilty as charged i moved my senior you know accounting manager up to a cfo and was he ready no shane's his name and but he grew into it you know and and boy i felt better to have to be able to say i had a cfo yeah well what's interesting and but it and just we're different right well, and Chad, you hit on this when, when he was, Chad, when you were talking about the potential segments to this morning workshop, when we think about defined roles, which is really defined accountabilities and, uh, and you know, the org chart, but the org chart's kind of dead, right? The, the you know, uh, if we start linking function, if we do function mapping, it's much healthier and that is a facilitated workshop. But if we start doing performing function, leading a conversation about function mapping, it's really the, it's that the, and then what? Okay, so you got an order. And then what? Well, I take the order over to our operations. Great. How? What? Why? Et cetera. And how do we figure out every, you know, where all the arrows? And it ends up looking like one of those crime boards with the yarn between all the pictures. But to your point, we're facilitating a, facilitating, facilitating a conversation about who is doing what, why, and how well, right? And that's why I put the scoring, I pulled the scoring out of the individual and put it in the executive function. Um, because what we don't want to be doing is saying, well, hey, Bob, you know, I'm a 73, you're a 48. Well, Bob's a 48 because you know, there are these are cogs in the business engine and he, he or she may not be getting the information, the help, the support, that blah, blah, blah. So, um, that makes sense. So Brad, is this, so the example that you 
you just use? I mean, is this a real, real client? I mean, oh, I, oh. I mean, for position. Uh, okay, okay. You could come up with from the CEO on down, right? From the yeah. CEO. Well, and yes, and to just to amplify that point, how often is our CEO, quote unquote, right, actually the president? You know, more of a more of a tactical role, and they've forgotten their strategic role. They they started with a strategic role, and then they they morphed into a tactical role because they had to to grow the business to get things done, and they've forgotten that that you know they have two hats, right? The CEO hat and the president, the operator hat, and and they need to put their CEO hat on every once in a while. And the fundamental role of the CEO is to maximize shareholder value within the context of the business's vision and mission. And the, the subtext there, who is in the room with me? None of you. Okay. So Vern and I had a brief conversation about this and he said, no, the fundamental role of the CEO is strategy. And I, you know, and I, yes, but strategy is implicit in the, in the definition I just gave. And, uh, and we can debate this all day, but how do we get our client to put the CEO hat on, right? Put your shareholders hat on and start thinking about maximizing transferable value. Hey, George. Yes. Uh, I think I'm probably redundant, but back a half hour when you guys first started talking about this, my my big topic to get covered with was is the senior leadership team, and I guess you've got it covered. But uh, from uh, you know all the other drivers and and the 20, 20, 23 other drivers are important. You know, without a senior leadership team, you're capped at pick a number, a million, five million, whatever whatever it is. It, there is a point where if you only got one guy driving the bus and trying to do everything, changing tires and everything else, then you're capped. That's a big deal to me. Outstanding, Steve. I totally agree. And thank you because when we talk about COIs, let's go to Brad's topic, the effective senior leadership team, and this is the this is the ninth hour of training I gave at BEI. You know, we had a standalone hour on this exact topic. The, the, the effect of senior leadership is the link. It's a, it's a strong link between you and a high-level wealth and insurance advisor, personal advisor, right? And because the senior leadership team is typically a significant risk to value it is also a significant limiter. It's like a governor in an engine, having just experienced that. It's a good, don't tell the law, the governor in an engine speed. And uh, that, that effective senior leadership team is a link with, with your COIs, with your wealth. And this is, this is the conversation that I suggest you might have with a wealth advisor as you qualify them. Do they have a big enough book of business? Do they have clients of the right size, right? Two and a half million and up. Great. Do they have clients who might be willing to have a conversation about equity value planning? Terrific. But what's in it, the with them for the COI is that the effective senior leadership, effective senior leadership team, if you look at those seven key results, we have opportunities for advanced planning, advanced estate planning, advanced wealth planning, sophisticated compensation this is a qualifier for you do you provide do you yourself your team your you know guardian ubs etc sophisticated um sophisticated compensation non-qualified deferred comp stock appreciation rights phantom equity those protect cash right those those not only protect cash but they nail people's feet to the floor and it forces, Brad, to your point, it can force a conversation about, well, I don't want to give Bob equity. I, I don't know how long Bob's going to stick around or Bob isn't the kind of guy I want to have equity, even if it's phantom equity, right? And with vesting schedules, et cetera. So deferred comp, all of those sophisticated and the power of sophisticated insurance instruments that need not be expensive, but sophisticated insurance instruments to de-risk debt. If I get hit by a bus, I want an insurance policy that is going to pay off the debt so that my my widow isn't seeing our house be foreclosed on because even though I was told not to, I've put personal guarantees on the business. I want insurance so that if my CFO quits, 
I can hire the best CFO for my business who happens to be in Chicago in another job on a vesting schedule. I need to buy her out of that. I want to move her. I want to help potentially bonus her so she can buy a home. And I need to weather the period when she's when she's ramping up, but she's the best for me. We can have insurance that pays for that. So I'm kind of going down a rabbit hole, but that's the link. So Steve, your point's a very good one. And the effective senior leadership team, which Chad brought up and Brad has discussed, as has Joe, that's going to be a topic we're going to dig in on. Now we're going to do a full hour, uh, hour plus with Mike on Monday, uh, Monday, that afternoon on this very topic, but we certainly can workshop it in the morning. Is that, sorry to go on a tirade, guys. Does that make sense? Joe has a diagram. Oh. Joe has a diagram. Joe, this is Joe's, this is Joe's magic. Oh. Go ahead, Matt. So, so uh, when we talk about this uh, and, and see, he's very similar mantra and, and the way they do it is they basically in your world, George, or our world, if you will, is the executives here responsible for the both not only the revenue, the operations and finance, yeah. right? So they're this in the in the different there's an integrator is a term that's being used and then the visionary. Fifty percent of the time, there's a visionary that's there. Do we have a visionary in this company or not? That's a, like an early on question. But there's three rules about this. One is that one person in each of the roles. You yeah. can't have two people well, sitting in a box. One person accountable. Totally agree. This doesn't work, right? And then second one is they should really look at the top before you put people in the seats because this is what happens is you roll the person around the role around the person versus the person around the role, right? So eradicate, eliminate all the people in the boxes and then start out what's needed in that role as the revenue up. That's function mapping. What's you needed, you know, function, what's needed, what are the four or five things? Because the person would, they might shy away from asking that because that person doesn't possess that skill set that you currently have in that role. And so that's the dangerous part about it. That's where we ought to be able to be very clear about this is what's expected in that role. If that person can't live up to the expectation, then we need to re rethink either the role or expand this and make it another block. And yep. ultimately, who's responsible for revenue, who's responsible for operations, and then each one of them have tied back to KPIs, which you've yep. done very effectively, George, and, and your work is that whole thing is like, this could be all part of it, just a really introductory session that we could deliver to our clients on the education about this role responsibility chart. Absolutely, Joe. And something I want to I want to say here. So if we think about, let's pick finance. So finance is accountable for. I'm going to keep it real easy. Finance is accountable for every Monday delivering the business flow report, right? Our money ball KPI and the supporting. You know, all of the other data we're watching week by week by week. Cool. Fantastic. Does that mean, it sounds like it implies, but does it require that the finance person be preparing all of the, be accountable for all of those numbers? No, but the finance person is accountable for bringing them together in a way that can be communicated clearly and crisply and efficiently to the senior leadership team so that our Monday morning meeting is, uh, is, is as productive as possible. And w when I'm the CEO and I sit at the head of the table, I have one role in that meeting, really. It's to ask why. Hey, guys, I see cash flow is down a little. Why? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I see that, um, you know, Steve, my fractional CFO, my CFO has put together the business flow report, but on there are sales and marketing numbers. Now, does that mean that Steve is accountable for the sales and marketing numbers? No. Steve is accountable for getting them onto that piece of paper, but my revenue heads are accountable for telling me the you know the pipeline and sales opportunity, the value of of sales opportunities. Uh, does that does that make sense? So Joe, your your this goes exactly to the point. Um, you know, I, we, go ahead. And it's just a follow up with this because I think we're we were talking about a few minutes ago was saying. How do you manage an outsourced CFO? How do you manage an outsourced revenue officer? How do you manage an outsourced operations partner? And I think where the answer- Can you say you? Do you mean you as the business advisor? No, you as the owner 
Okay, okay so, so okay, so we're so we're three drivers with the owner. Go ahead. Yeah, so we're you know you can. I think the comment earlier was we're not big enough. We don't have that person in the position, but you certainly can get that work done by your CPA and get the right people doing that work for you. Matter of fact, I'm just now working with uh, about a million, a uh, million and a half, um, and I'm asking some very questions around their all their numbers, and they don't have it, but they can get their CPA to complete complete all the different data to give them that strategic decision making capabilities. Managing that outsourced resource is about thinking. It just gets our reduces the amount of questions and allows us to work all at a higher level because we have the proper data. Joe, Joe, amen. Amen. Listen, something I talk about a lot, if you guys ever watch, and I would invite you to watch on YouTube, it doesn't matter what language it's in, because you'll pick it up like this. In rally driving, there's a driver, and they don't call the person a co-pilot, and it's often a woman, actually. It's a co-driver, and that co-driver has the map and is saying, and, and they have code, they have fast speed for left, right, 45 degrees, et cetera, hill, people. So you're, you're sort of the co-driver, in, in the rally term with the CEO. Now, if we bring in a fractional CFO, there are really, I guess the, the business owner has three, three choices, right? They can recognize that they don't actually have a CFO and say, I don't want to do anything about it. They can say, I have, I have Bob, who I'm calling the CFO, but he's not quite up to it. I'd like to bring in someone to coach, coach him up. I like Bob. He's been here for 20 years. But he's smart, he's hardworking, and, and importantly, we need to ask Bob, do you want this? Right? That's our job, or the CEO's job. We need to facilitate that conversation, and so we can bring in a fractional to coach Bob up, or let's say that they they really just don't have that function. They have, they have a bookkeeper, but they don't have that function at all, but they need it, and it's amazing. We have $10 million businesses lumping along with essentially a bookkeeper, because because they're not using financial data to manage to, to grow the business. Anyway, then we can bring in a fractional. Joe, to your point, how do we, the, the fractional should be on, on a, on a, the fractional should be, and from my perspective, should be, I'd love to hear your perspective. Do you guys agree, disagree? Shoot me down. That fractional CFO should be in the Monday morning meeting. The fractional CFO should have the accountabilities, right? Just because they're fractional doesn't mean that the CFO's accountabilities are, are jettisoned. This fractional has the accountabilities of a full-time CFO. They need to price themselves a pen. So that that's, I mean, that's from my perspective, do nothing, coach up, bring in a fractional, and maybe the fractional ends up being, how, got it, we, gosh, we've seen this how many times with you guys? Hey, George, I'm going to bow out for a while because I've been hired by X as the typically CEO or CFO, right? And we have members of this community. Kent just went through this as a CEO. He got brought, you know, he started working on a client as a, he ended up being brought in as the CEO for about six months there. Kent's now back. Does that make sense? I hit just well, it. Yeah. And I mean, for example, George, I mean, right now I'm acting as a, I'm acting as a chief revenue officer for a, a firm. And I mean, I am involved in their weekly meetings. Yeah. Um, with their entire staff. Yeah. By the way, you know where they're not having this conversation? Not to pick on them, it's just it points out the difference. It strikes me at they're not having this conversation in the value builder community. They're not having this conversation in the biz equity community. If there, if there is one, they're not having this conversation in the capitalized community. Um, we are, we are different. And this conversation is our power, right? Um, yet. So Brad, you asked a simple question and we just had, this is why there's no agenda. Did that, did we, did we answer your question? I just posed, you know, that, that I need to get up to speed quickly on using the tool and anything I can do, Brad, Call me, text me, email me, or right. we'll jump on a call and I will walk you through. And, you know, those calls come in, they can sound like, hey, George, I've just done Clarity One. Can you help me read the tea leaves? Or what do you think? Or before I take this, any, at any point in the engagement, I'm happy to have a conversation. And in the community, you can just type, you can type it as a post. By the way, I close the community so it's private, guys. So if you put it in post here, the world can't see it. All right. Brad, I mean, I'll just mention this for me. 
I mean, I, I try to use clarity on every single client I have, no matter what, no matter what. And I'll give you an example. And I knew that, that this was not necessarily the best tool for a potential client. Actually, they're a friend of mine, but they have a uh, consignment store, low volume, young, young family trying to really build this business. And I went through clarity with them yesterday and they absolutely, their, their jaws were dropping. And I used that more of a tool to get them to start thinking much bigger, get them to start thinking even in the weeds. And even though they thought they were running their businesses as tight as they possibly could, they realized they're, they were nowhere near it. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know that there's a, a perfect match when you can use clarity again i personally use it with every client can i can i amplify that point um for for brad's benefit and for the benefit of anybody watching this so 13 years doing this type of work three years at growth drive two years with clarity and the, the, it is clear there is no bad has ever come to someone from having this conversation with a client every single client to the contrary, the more times you have this conversation in a bona fide way, the the more engagements you will win. Run discovery, not on your phone though, guys. Stagecraft. I've seen I've, people have told me they did it. You feel free. Will it will unlike previous technologies, it is formatted to to fit on your phone. However, think of Stagecraft and the client experience. Do you want them because a phone implies app? when this is actually a very sophisticated tool, but run it with everyone. Every business owner you talk to, hey man, I'm not suggesting, but you know what, I'm a giver. And uh, if you have 15 minutes, I'd love to to uh, just, I'd, I'd love to help you have a, a, a different understanding of your business. Does that make sense? Okay. No bad can come of it. All right, well, guys, and, go ahead, Chad, please. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of times they may not want to hear uh, what what the findings are so, so I feel like, you know, this is a very professional, easy way of calling your baby ugly without having to call your baby ugly. That's, that's exactly uh, right. And I, and I tell my clients as well, I'm like, look, I hope that you get something out of this exercise. But a lot of times I will even tell them, look, I am going through this process more so for me than you, because this is going to help me learn and educate myself on on your business and your challenges. Well, and there's there are two that the psychology, Chad, and and by the way, yes, we we have spoken with psychologists on this, business psychologists informally, but to to validate my perspective, because you know I don't want to buy my own baloney, because I'm I'm asking you guys to buy it, or I'm asking you guys to buy a process that I want to make sure I validate. The psychology of a client hearing themselves say. Nobody says I don't need high recurring revenues, right? Nobody says I don't need my pro people to be productive and loyal. Nobody says my world wouldn't be better if I had an effective senior leadership team. They just, if they do, you have to ask yourself that that's a qualifier. Like either they say it's baloney. Okay. That's one warning sign. Or they say that they're top of the world in everything. That's another, Hey man, I'm going to email you your report and I wish you all the luck in the world. And, and they'll call you because they'll figure out that they're full of it, but the psychology of hearing yourself say that you're not top of the charts in one, four, 14, 24 of these growth driving objectives is incredibly powerful so that then they are holding up the baby saying, wow, I've never thought of my business this way. No one has ever taken me through a look at the entire business. I had no idea. And there was all sorts of, I didn't, what strategic capacity. I didn't even know that was a thing, but it really makes sense. And, and, and so. Use it with everyone, man. And the best use case for those of you watching is live. On Zoom is good in the flesh is best. And uh, and with that, guys, I apologize. I have to sign off. I have a meeting in one minute. And I'm going to be about two minutes late to that meeting. Thank you. Thanks. Good deal. Coffee. Guys, great, great conversation. I want you to have a great week, please. If I can help in any way, 
please call me. Okay. Yes, yeah, so Brad. If there's anything I can do, feel free to reach out to me yeah. directly. Thanks, Chad. I'll be more happy to help. Thank you, Chad. Awesome. Well, good. Bye. Thanks, George. Have a great day. Bye, guys.